Folks, I've got an admission to make. I have finally made it to a location I have been trying to visit for several decades. Hitchhiked around Australia when I was 17, didn't get here. Went around Australia in a four wheel drive with a camper trailer in 2006, didn't get here. Been doing a job that sees me travel all around Australia at least one lap every single year for the last 13 years, never been here. Folks, I've finally done it. And I'm right here in the Flinders Ranges. <laughs> G'day and welcome to Oz Solo. As the name suggests, this is a 100% solo production. I film, present, edit, and even fly the drone totally solo. I'm ultra passionate about showing you Australia through my eyes. Just wait till you see what I found out here. Jump in and ride along on this episode of Oz Solo. The Flinders Ranges, South Australia. Can't tell you how excited I am just to get the briefest little sniff of this part of Australia. Of course, like I said, I've only got a very short period of time, but I'm going to make the most of it. Now, there's a couple of firsts on this trip. Obviously, never been to the Flinders Ranges. It's the first time for me. It's also the very first time I will be filming an Oz Solo outside of Western Australia. When I named it Oz Solo, obviously I put the word Oz in there because I'd love to see this thing go all around Australia. So this is a big moment for me. I'm filming an Oz Solo outside of WA. And the third first, of course, I'm towing a bit of luxury. I've never done that before. I've got myself a Maverick Viper 13. It's a bit of a hybrid camper. I'll show you around it later on. I've been lent it for a couple of days so I can see what it's like to tow in luxury. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have even consider going over something like this with a caravan on the back, but give it a go. Gee, you does it no problem at all. Oh, I get nervous, but I'm told. I'm told it handles it. That thing's got an air conditioner, a shower, a toilet, double bed. I'm just gonna see what it feels like. A bit of luxury in the bush. Three new firsts, Flinders Rangers, Oz Solo outside of WA, and a luxurious hybrid camper on the back of the GU. Let's get stuck into it. Moon Myrna. It gets its name, believe it or not, from a town site that used to exist right about where the homestead is today. There's not much left out there right now. It's hardly even worth going to have a look at. There's a bit of junk laying around, not much else. But the reason for it being there was that people were mining copper up at Blindman to the north. And that was a stopover on the way down to Port Augusta to send it off. Like a lot of things, from there, mining turned into agriculture, and that's what it is today, an agricultural station. Heaps of ruins around the place. And we're gonna go and find quite a few of them on this trip, hopefully. Some of them span back hundreds of years. It's just an amazing part of Australia's history. Alrighty, got the camper on the back. Camp is this way, but there's a couple of bits and pieces I wanna go and have a look at that's gonna necessitate me backtracking if I head out to camp and drop the camper off. I've been told that this bad boy can handle some pretty rough tracks, so I don't want to have to backtrack. I'm just going to push on with the camper on board and uh, see if we can't get out to a few of these old ruins out here and old sites of historical importance whilst I've got the caravan on the back. Then I can I can run into camp and keep it all in a straight line, if you know what I mean. So, well, there's the first little Oi! bumpy bit. Oh! As someone who's fairly new to towing, it still makes me slightly nervous to be doing that. <laughs> Get a load of that. I've seen photos of these, so I kind of knew what to expect. But they are more spectacular in real life. It's old ruins like these that give us a fantastic glimpse back into Australia's history. <laughs> Get a load of this, will you? The old fireplace here, still standing. Actually, it looks like it's ready to use, to be fair. Not much left of the walls. They're just about all crumbled down, of course. This right here is the old Mern Myrna School. The school's on that section right there. This here is housing, probably teacher's accommodation. 
Another building just over there. That was a settler's accommodation. Crazy to think. <laughs> the people went to school out here, eh? Unbelievable, of course, the Garn Railway line runs directly out front there, so she was well positioned. Ah, imagine trying to get away with a day off school out here. They'd find you. They'd see you for miles away. I love these places, I really do. <laughs> you know, of interest, I was speaking to the station owner about these ruins and when they were looking to buy this property, the property had to tick a few boxes and it was getting close. A lot of those boxes were being ticked, but they were still on an hour and a bit. And they were brought out here. And when he first locked eyes on these ruins, that was enough for him to buy the property. That was the clincher for him. To think that he had these on his property was enough to buy the whole lot. And having walked around here for a bit now, yeah, I get it. I see what he means. <laughs> oh, look at that. Some of these ruins out here could talk. I reckon they'd have some pretty interesting tales. This probably, this old bucket's probably had some fairly average jobs in its lifetime and the way it's back end's blowing out, well, something suggests to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, we won't go into it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> of course there is. You know what? It doesn't matter where you go or what ruins you're visiting anywhere in Australia, you'll always find Sardine tins. Now look, I don't mind a sardine every now and again, but given the volume of sardine tins I've found around Australia, it would suggest to me that the people of a bygone era really, really like sardines. You know, I made a different stuff back then. How cool is that? The old man out of school ruins. Wouldn't take too much to get that up and running again. A lick of paint, a roof. Okay, there's actually quite a bit to get that up and running again, but how cool is it, eh? Old ruins, I'll never get sick of looking at them. All right, boy, she's heated up out there today. I think we might just keep pushing on. Flinders Rangers in the background. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you believe it? That fence on the right serves an important role out here. But back in the day, they didn't exactly look nor always work like the modern equivalent. Check this out. Whew. All right, we've got to go on foot from here. This is as close as I can get in the Forby. Now, <laughs> this thing up here, someone's idea of a cruel joke, but before we get to it, have a go at this. This right here is a fence. I know, I get a bit excited about fences. Leave me alone. But this fence right here, I'll give you a look at it. That bad boy right there. There she goes, she's falling over here, okay? Don't judge it. You'd probably fall over too if you were built in 1890. It was, it was built to keep the sheep on that side and the dingoes on this side. About that, come and check this thing out. Because this did a good job of keeping the sheep out and the dingoes out. This, however, someone's idea of a sick joke. So let me get over this 1890 fence. All right. So this is what we're dealing with here. This is someone's idea of a cruel joke, I reckon. Story goes, this little wall here, hand built, probably close to 100 years ago, had a whole heap of sheep on this side, and they didn't want to have to re-muster them from over this side. They didn't want them getting across onto that side there, because it's rough as guts, you're not gonna get a horse back in there. They did all the mustering back then on foot. Can you imagine walking through here on foot, chasing sheep, just about to drive your batty. So some bloke decided he must have had a spare couple of months. By hand, he was gonna make this little tiny wall, it's only about a metre high, he's gonna make a little tiny wall on the side of a hill to stop the sheep going over there. In all this country, in the middle of nowhere, three to 400 metres of wall to stop sheep running away. <laughs> I reckon. He'd had one too many warm beers that day. <laughs> Look at it. Must admit, he's done a good job of it. <laughs> See this plant here? Looks like it's not much to it, but it's a real noxious weed. Nothing eats it. Now, what's important about it, on the tip of each one of these little green bits, 
There's a little tiny hypodermic needle. There must be a couple of hundred of them in there, maybe, maybe a thousand. If you fall off your motorbike when you're mustering out here, choose a rock, choose a tree, choose anything, but don't choose this particular bush. Those little hypodermic needles right there, they'll break off and they take three to four weeks for them to fester and then pop out of your skin. Itchy, painful, I'm getting out of here. Well, I'll tell you what, I've seen some pretty incredible things in the bush, but <laughs> a hand-built wall a metre high to keep sheep from one side of the hill off the other side of the hill, but only running at about 200 metres. Maybe you just got bored and decided, you know what, sheep, you win. I don't know. Right, I got about an hour to get to camp. Cracker little spot too, I've never been there, but I've been told it's an absolute cracker. Fire going, a couple of brewskis, and apparently from camp, you can actually see, uh, it's in that direction, the entire edge of the Flinders Ranges as the sun goes down. Yeah, yeah, sign me up. That'll do. Cheers, folks. Cheers. What a setup. Have a go with this. I'm feeling a bit rock star, a bit la di da da. Sun's still high in the sky. It's still stinking hot. I'm about to get dinner on. Here's the reason. We are cooking, or I'm cooking, you're not here, lamb shanks tonight. Take about three hours to do these bad boys. But what I love about it is that it's super low and slow. Once this is all in here, which will take me 10 minutes, you forget about it. You don't even look at it until you're ready to eat. The whole thing can get done on the fire. It's just too hot out of here right now to be cooking on the fire, and that is the beauty of a setup like this. I can just get this going on the gas and walk away and worry about it later. I'm gonna get the fire going a bit later because there is one ingredient that does need to go in there. There's a bit going on over here, as you can see. I'm gonna run you through it real quick. Uh, starting, of course, you'll need lamb shanks. Two per person. I have one tonight and one tomorrow for lunch. Way to rock and roll. Zucchini, carrot, mushrooms, onion, of course. Garlic, don't hate me, I bought that stuff. Couldn't find any others. Uh, from this side, olive oil, of course, we've got sliced mushrooms in butter sauce. We've got some diced Italian tomatoes, some more tomatoes, chickpeas. If you don't like chickpeas, put chickpeas in. They don't look like chickpeas when they're cooked. Uh, chipotle chili, salt and pepper, mixed herbs, a couple of secret ingredients. We've got a little capsule of hot sauce. That is the bomb. Throw that away. We've got this. I bet you've never heard of it. Magic syrup. I'll talk about that a bit in a minute. And my favourite, Vegemite. Don't question it, just do it. Okay. Right here, folks, so I've decided to go a bit rogue here and I've just thrown everything in because I kind of figure you've seen it all before and you know what's going on. So we put the vegetables in and I've kept them real chunky. I haven't cut them up. So I literally put in whole mushrooms, whole zucchinis. But don't put too many mushrooms in because you're going to add a tin of mushrooms later. So don't. Don't put too many mushrooms in. What went next? We put both lots of tomato in. We put the dodgy garlic in that I purchased. I actually put a fair bit of that in there. We put the herbs and spices in there. We put some chili in there. We put a little tube of chili I had. It nearly blew my face off, super hot. Now, this stuff here, the old magic syrup. 
This right here is all-in-one seasoning, otherwise known as MSG. It gets an extremely bad rap, but it's not as bad as everyone thinks. In moderation, it's really not that big a deal. Better than salt in a lot of respects. It makes the flavours pop because of the chemicals in it, and it's not bad if you put just a little bit in there. A lot of people would have put stock in there. I don't go with that theory. I reckon stock's for noodles. Vegemite. It's good enough for toast. It's good enough for this. A couple of really decent tablespoons of Vegemite in there. Add some flavour and, of course, adds much-needed salt as well. I added one thing of water. And right now, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to come back and put my chickpeas in there, a little tin of mushrooms in there, anything else that I can find. But for now, that can just sit there and do its thing. What a spot. Flinders Ranges. Lamb shanks. Cold beer. Luxury accommodation. Does it get any better? Does it get any better? Late afternoon in the outback, when the colours just start to change, everything starts to pop. The Flinders have got about another half an hour to go before, have a look at those ranges up there. It's about a half an hour to go before they just go, ho ho! Then all the stars come out, the evening star comes out first. I get so excited. Now, I don't know whether I have acclimatised to the heat or whether or not I've got a heat stroke, but I was actually starting to feel ever so slightly chilly, so I've got the fire going. Probably didn't need to, but what's camping without a fire? This bad boy over here, I've only had it set up for a couple of hours. I've already got a bit of a charging station going inside for my camera gear. Watch this space. I reckon something like this could be in my future. After having lived out of canvas bags and rooftop tents my whole life, which I still love, there's still a place for it. But that, that's a lap of luxury. Half an hour till sunset. I reckon I might be able to squeeze in one more cheeky beer. Have a look at that fire, she's cranking. Look at that. Have a go at that, will you? Three hour lamb shanks. A lot of ingredients in that, but folks, I tell you what, once you put the ingredients in, you really just leave them. You don't even look at it. You just walk away, you come back three hours later, she's good to go. Now, I had a try out there. That is melt in the mouth. Now, I told you there was a secret ingredient that had to go on the fire. Well, of course, none other than roast potato. Traditionally, this is served with mashed potato, but roast them. Just chuck it under there and eat it. Tastes just as good, if not better. Have a look at this. The wind is howling out there right now, it's dusty as heck. To be able to sit in here, I feel a little bit spoiled. I've got a big day tomorrow. I'm gonna to leave the whole camper set up tomorrow, right here, I'm gonna head out. I've got some goals to kick. Uh, there's a water hole I wanna see, a couple more ruins I wanna check out. Then I wanna to get to the highest point on the property, which has actually got, remarkably, one of the oldest surveyor's marks in South Australia. So, big day tomorrow, I'm gonna to finish this up Finish my beer, I'm literally gonna hit the sack. Oh no, I'm not, no I'm not. That's right, I had a surprise for myself, a little treat. I'm gonna have a shower tonight. <laughs> I'm usually a bit of a grub when it comes to coming out bush, but I got plenty of water. In fact, I can check my water tanks from there. I'm still, I'm still full. I got heaps of water, I'm having a shower, into bed, big day tomorrow, folks. Oh, if you can't tell, I really am just living the dream. I'm loving this, I'm frothing. Have you added the Flinders to your bucket list yet? Well, stick around, because if you haven't, I guarantee you will. Not a bad way to start the day. Tell you, for a bloke who ate half a sheep last night, I woke up with a powerful hunger. No problem, nothing that a toasted bacon, egg, cheese, and veggie might. Sandwich won't fix. Weather looks like it's come over a bit inclement today, and they are forecasting perhaps thunderstorms later on this afternoon. I'm not bummed about that at all. I've got the perfect setup in there, that's not gonna be a problem. But also to see the Flinders in a different light, you know, everyone comes out here when it's just perfect weather, to see it when there is a bit of a thunderstorm, I reckon that'll be kinda cool. First things first though, gonna finish me brekkie, start me brekkie, 
And then I've just got a bit of a chore I've got to do inside the old van there, but that's going to be very easy given the conditions. Excuse me, this is not going to be pretty to watch. Mm. That, <laughs> that was a true breakfast of champions and me. All right, this is a little process I've got to do every morning before I head out, and that is, of course, to back up all the footage I got from the previous day. Uh, they all get backed up to external hard drives, and I do it in duplicate, uh, just to be sure, <laughs> just to be sure. And this is exactly what I was excited to take away the Maverick with me for, because can you not see how I'm working smarter here, not harder? Uh, just makes life so much easier. Right, this will take me about an hour, finish me a cup of coffee, get everything packed away, and then... Despite the weather, I think we head out, have a bit of a look around. There are a couple of things I am frothing to see. I've never seen them before, of course, and a couple of things I cannot wait to show you folks. Have I already done that one? I think I have. This stretch of track that I'm on right now is exactly what I'm looking for. Long, straight and thin, kind of gives itself away, doesn't it? It's an old railway line, or what remains of it. It's the old railway line, the Garn. The Garn, of course, ran from Adelaide, Alice Springs into Darwin started its operation around 1878. Didn't actually make it to Darwin, interestingly enough. You got to the end of it, you had to jump off the train and get on a camel. How's the indignity? Now, there's not much left of the old line. In fact, I'm off it now. That's all it was, it's all sort of there. But there is something just up here that apparently is really worth seeing that remains pretty much in original condition. Oh yeah, that's gotta be it right, that's gotta be it right there. <laughs> yep, get a load of this, <laughs> how cool. That is incredible. This is one of the very few remaining bridges from the old Garn Railway. Of course, the railway ran up across the top there and this river, well, this must absolutely flow with water. And I think it's because of the size of this structure that it's managed to stay here for as long as it possibly has because most of them have been washed away. Come over this side, I'll give you a look at something. This is what I wanted to show you. Get a load of this debris right here. I mean, this river looks to me like it is bone dry. It looks like it would never flow, but as is obvious, it must come through here like a raging torrent to deposit all of this in here. It's packed in so tight and it bends around this column. Just incredible. Mother Nature, you are something else. I probably shouldn't do that. There's probably a big snake in there. <laughs> Interesting fact about that old Garn railway line, it was so notoriously rough and washed out that every train that went along it would take its own spare sleepers so that it could repair sections of the track that would notoriously be washed away. <laughs> the way I like to think of it is that they were the olden day Max tracks. Carry a set and you pretty much get yourself out of trouble. A bit bigger, a bit heavier, but yeah, you know what I mean. Rightio, we're gonna head up into these eastern hills over here just now, and we are literally looking for a needle in a haystack. I've no idea if I'm gonna be able to find what I'm looking for out there. I think this is the hill I'm supposed to be looking for. In fairness though, <laughs> it looks like just about every hill out here. I'm gonna leave the track here. Well, I must say leave the track, I'm not gonna track. I'm gonna leave the track here and go overland apparently to the top of this hill and look into the gully. So here we go. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. I found a needle in a haystack. Let's go and have a look. Well, that is cool. That was a bit of a mission. The car is way up the top of that hill there. But worthwhile. I am amazed how well this is preserved. How well built it is. There's no mortar in this, there's nothing. This is just rocks all balanced together. What is it? It's the remains of the fireplace. It's actually the chimney of an old shepherd's hut. This is where someone used to live on their own way back in the day to look after the sheep out here. Mind blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Now, of course, because there's no mortar in any of these, most of them have all fallen down. But this one is in remarkably good condition. You can really see that it was once a chimney. 
What a place to live. Mind officially blown. Stoked I found this. <laughs> Not many people do. Well, it was suggested I take a bit of a detour, <clears throat> come in behind these hills here. And apparently, there's a creek, quite a large creek, flows all year round, crystal clear water, a magic spot to spend a couple of hours during the heat of the day at lunch. Have a look at this country around here. How on earth can there be a creek anywhere through here? But I've got my little mud map here that I was given. I'm on the right track, I know that for a fact. And all I've got to do now, find a windmill and turn left. <laughs> I reckon someone's having to lend to me. I seriously think I'm being led down the garden path here. Yeah, there's a windmill and there's a, there's a track. There's a windmill on a track. All right. <laughs> It's flat country, there can be... Hang about. There's a bit of a gorge down there. No way. You gotta be kidding me. I legit thought I was gonna be stitched up. I thought I was gonna find an old concrete water tank with stagnant water in it. Ha <laughs> ha, water hole, yeah, very funny. Oh my God. Folks, I found paradise. <laughs> well, I'll be stuffed. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this. This is truly incredible. I mean, that way it is as dry and as hostile as you could possibly imagine as it is that way. And this valley here, I don't know where this water comes from, but it is crystal clear. Big thunderstorm rolling in. I reckon this is me for a couple of hours. What an absolute cracking spot. Amazing. Jeez, it's just stunning out here, isn't it? Blows me away, first time, I'll be back, that's for sure. One of the more, I guess, quintessential things people like to do when they come out to the Flinders Ranges, and for good reason too, is to drive up on to the top of the ranges out here because it affords you an amazing view. As you know, in flat country, you don't really need much of an elevation to get a good view, but I reckon if I can get up on top of these, it'll be absolutely awesome. And I've been told, up the top of here somewhere, is one of the original old surveyor's cans. Not many of those left, so we'll see if we can find it, but for now, concentrate on finding the track that takes me to the top. Something tells me she's gonna be steep. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, that's significantly steeper, and by the look of it, a lot more shaly <laughs> than I had anticipated. It's the Flinders Ranges, not Coffs Harbour. I'll knock a bit of pressure out of these tyres. Sail our way to the top. Oh. All right. Tyres are down. I'm in low range. Rear locker's thinking about going on. Rear locker is on. Let's see if we can't crawl our way to the top. I've been told it's exceptionally bumpy. And already, oh man, look at the size of the rock on the track here. Already I can see that. Way steeper than I'd anticipated. Good Lord. Whoops, things are falling off the dash. That's how, that's how steep it is. Wow. Just wow. Folks, don't be like me. Don't wait decades to get out here and see the Flinders Ranges. Go tomorrow. Quit work. Work doesn't matter, the Flinders Ranges does.
That is something else. Look at that view! Look at that view! Look at the track! <laughs> Incredible, mind-blowing. I think I'm nearly at the top. Look at the view. I'm blown away. I'm ecstatic. The track continues. I'm in heaven, folks. I'm in heaven. Look at that. Look at that. But that is not the hero of the show. That view right there, that view, I have never seen anything like it. Okay, behind me, that's a surveyor's trig point, one of the very few that still remain. Handmade, out of stones, and it was used as a survey point when they were mapping this entire area. You could see it for miles away, and I can see why now, having come up here. Now, I've been told by numerous people that the view from up here was excellent. I get around, I've seen some views. I kid you not, this is nothing short of one of the most spectacular things I have ever seen anywhere. I'm literally lost for words, this is breathtaking. Folks, do yourself a favor. Put the Flinders Ranges on your map. Get out here, don't leave it for decades like I did. Come and find out for yourself why I am literally having the time of my life out here. <laughs> it's, how do you even capture that? How do I even show you that? It's just, it's mind boggling. Well, that was one of the more sensational things I've literally ever seen. Blown away. Heading back to camp now and there's only one thing that would make this day ever so slightly better. <laughs> I reckon you can guess what it is. Well, I don't reckon you needed to be a rocket scientist to figure out what that one last ingredient was to the perfect day. I've got the fire going, camp's already set up, a couple of steaks for dinner. Folks, I've got one last day here in the Flinders Ranges. I'm gonna spend it back up on top of that hill and I'm also gonna spend the heat of the afternoon down by that waterhole. What a spot, I hope you get to see it one day. For me, I've got three days now to get back across the Nullarbor when I'm all done and dusted. Couple of nights camping on the Nullarbor, looking forward to that, folks can't tell you how much I have enjoyed this trip and I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me. Hope to catch you next time, eh? Somewhere in Australia for Oz Solo. Catch you then. Cheers, by the way.